In Affinity 3, there's a really powerful tool tucked away in the Vector Tools, and that's the Vector Flood Fill Tool. And it can use it to create images made up of images, as well as colors, gradients, and much, much more. And it's super easy to use and very powerful. So let's just go through it with just a basic image. I've got this Christmas image, and I'm gonna convert it into a vector. To make it easier, I'm just gonna use an adjustment just to reduce the colors down a bit. So let's just go over here and I'm using Vector Studio area, but you don't have to, you could use the pixel. All you need to do is go to pixel, new adjustment layer, and then just down here to this one, posterize. All that does is reduce the colors down a bit. So posterize, and you can see then, you can set it to say 35, 45, and it near enough doesn't look much different to be honest but you can reduce it down to say seven, four. You can see as I do that, maybe go with say three, and then you'll end up with a lot of solid colors there. It still looks basically like the original image. And also the great thing about these adjustment layers is you can always just merge them. You don't have to keep it as a separate layer. And you can see that over in the layers panel, it's just made up of a, an additional layer, but you can merge it and then it just becomes all one layer. So you've now got this. What you can then do is you can turn this into a vector using image trace. Now this is a feature of Affinity 3, so you need that. Just go to vector and image trace with that background selected. And that will just create lots and lots and lots of curves, which you can then manipulate using the vector flood fill tool. So image trace, and you can see then with that, you get this. And you can modify the edge threshold. Yeah, probably hardly any change now because you've just reduced the colors down so much. Maybe push that. I've got 17%, 90. Really hardly any change, whatever you set it to now. And click apply. But the change is, instead of being obviously a photo, which it was originally, it is now a vector. And as a vector, you can then go over here to the layers panel, which you can find all of these panels, window, general, and down here, swatches, layers, etc. there. And you can see it's made up of curves, lots and lots of curves. And you can select all those curves, hold down the shift, so all selected. You don't have to, you could just select some of them. But then the key thing about this, Vector Studio, and just press R, just press R on the keyboard. This is the shortcut to it. And you can see it here it is, the Vector Flood Fill Tool. It's got a lot of functionality, some great functionality, but in this video, I'm just gonna use it fairly basically. So with this, you can see all these curves selected. And I'm just gonna go for this. You can see the opera there. Insert mode, I've got there inside. I've got the plus selected. And the thing I'm gonna use is this right at the end, which isn't even marked. It doesn't actually, that doesn't have a photo on it, which would be nice because that's what it's useful for. It's bitmaps and you can of course use all kinds of bitmap images. It doesn't have to be a photo, it could be anything maybe gradients, anything, mesh, anything. So click there and then just select a photo. And this course could be an image of maybe members of your family or something, or friends. Maybe you're just doing something. Maybe you're like a member of a choir like I am and you've got lots of members, put them all together, put a wonderful, but within the context of this lovely Christmas scene. And look, you've got a quick Christmas card. So I'm just gonna select one and click open. Now it doesn't do anything. Initially, what you need to do then is with this selected, you can then just hover over here and it's selected so you can just click. And you see you've got options here, fit mode. I've got none, but you can set it to min fit, stretch, etc. And just try out different ones to see which one works best for you. And then again, click here. And you can see as you click there, you can click different places and you will get, so you've got this image, it's the same image, but you're just clicking in different places you may feel like that. So you can build up a very, very abstract design. But again, you can always click here and select a different image. If I say maybe a different friend and then fill something else, click other places. Maybe then you might think, oh, let's just try the other settings. So max fit and just click there. And you can see some like that. You get, it fits it, the maximum fit, just fits it nicely. So you can see the entire image and again, click another one and let's just go for maybe a street scene or something. And you could maybe have pictures, say of London. So you could build up very rapidly. You've got 50 or 100 photos of London. 
rapidly paint with them. And you can just hover over parts of the image, just go over it, scan over it, and just, and it will generate pictures like that. So build up, maybe I don't know where this is, but obviously some probably place in Germany or Belgium or something, it's got the photos. You can build up all kinds of it. You could, of course, just leave some of the original image. So you've got the, obviously, the structures there. And also you've got, say, parts of it like this. You don't have to fill the whole thing with different, obviously, the images. But you see you've got other ones, MinFit as well. You can use that and just click there. You should get a very tiny little picture there or stretch. And also you can manipulate it as well. There is actually a, if you go over it, hover over a particular area, let's just click there, you will get often a cursor you can modify the size. Sometimes it seems to appear, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the different settings. So with that, you can modify it, but also now you can simply go here and select all these curves again. Let's just go all the curves. You don't have to, of course, select all of them. They're just layers. So you can apply layer effects. So just go down here to effects, just click effects, and then go, say, to 3D, and then radius. And you can see then, as you increase the radius, you can, of course, vary other settings, profiles, etc. See there, click close. You can give some depth to it. So let's just see the move tool. You can create some truly abstract, very unusual images, sort of like oozing sort of picture. <laughs> it's very odd. If you want to do that, of course, you don't have to, but it's just pointing out that the, the image can be modified. And also, of course, all these layers can be modified further with other effects as well. Maybe apply twirls or distortions, etc., to all of the layers. And Affinity 3 will process that. In Affinity 3, you can also use the Vector Flood Fill tool to break apart or recolor, say, a shape. So if I just go over here and create a basic shape, and it could be any shape, I'm just going with a rectangle, and just create that. Then I'm just going to create some lines, and it could be any different angles, whole loads of different lines. But I'm just going to go for a basic line, so pen tool is the pen tool and tools panel. And again, I'm in the vector studio part. Just click here, and hold down the shift, and that will create a nice straight line. And I can duplicate this line. Just go over here, Move Tool, that selected. I can use the Move Duplicate. Now I can also duplicate by holding down the Alter Option key. That's also useful as well. But just press Return, and then I can duplicate. And you can do this with any selected layer or shape, etc., with the Move Tool. So number of copies, let's just go for 10, and also can change the horizontal. And I can then create like that. Click OK. With that, I need to select all of the lines and the rectangle to use the Vector Flood Fill Tool. So, Move Tool there, just drag over all of them. They're all selected, and you can see there in the Layers panel, they're all selected. Press R on the keyboard, gets the Vector Flood Fill, and I'm just going with this one, the inside, the plus, and I'm just going to go, just matter, particularly in this case, MinFit, etc. So, just click, and I'm just going to use, say, red. Now, one thing you should notice, if I go here and click red again, red, 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 like that, the result isn't exactly the way you think it would be. You get, obviously, just one solid area, which you may want. But if you want them to be separated, don't go with the same colours. So just go here. So you could go with, say, one red, then click here, click here, click here, click here, and so on. Then you'll see you get all these red lines. If you didn't do that, you just did them all together, then you would end up with one solid. And again, you can change color there. So maybe go with that color, maybe go with this color, and maybe select this, go down here and get some greens. You might sort of nice visual effect design like this, I think. Again, you can select the same colors and like that. And then over here, you can see you've got your rectangle. Everything is inside the rectangle. So you can see the polylines, it, all it's doing is creating lots and lots of these shapes inside. And that's what this does, this insertion mode. And of course, with that, you can then, of course, resize it, modify it, tweak it in many other ways. But also, 
You can fill this very quickly with, say, an image. Again, you could have multiple images. So just go over here. Set bitmap fill. And obviously, in this case, again, a Christmassy scene. It's coming up to Christmas fairly soon. Just select some Christmas scenes. I'm just clicking this one. And now I again got the there, Vector Flood Fill Tool. I just click there. And I'm using MinFit. And I can click this one. Click this one again. They will be separated because if I clicked this one here, it would join it. Don't want that. So then I can select here another one. Click here. Maybe some presents or something. So you could have a picture of someone. Obviously a family member. And then maybe various pictures of presents in between. Or maybe a tree or something just to give a Christmassy feel. And click open. And then again click here. Click there. And you can see as you do it, just go across. A variety of different designs can be very quickly generated by using the same approach that was shown in the first example. And of course, all of these designs can be selected. So you just go over here and let's just select everything. And with that, do exactly the same as you did before. Where you could use, maybe go to effects. Just click there. So in effects, go with 3D. And you can then just see, create something like that. Or if you want to make it more individual, obviously, so you get actually the 3D effect there. So undo that. Let's just undo so you don't get them all. You could select, obviously, individual. So that one, click effects, 3D, and maybe change that. And you can see then you get this 3D effect here. Click close, maybe select another one. Maybe use the move tool, would be even better. Select that, and again, effects again. So you can then change that and create maybe a 3D effect in between all of the lines and click close. And you can then resize these as well. So the vector flood fill tool, again, go there. You can click here and fill it like that. And you can resize. There is an option for that. Probably the best way to do it, personally, is the fill tool. And you can see then you've got that and you can manipulate it, resize it, move it around and create a variety of different designs from that as well. Perhaps a simpler example would be something like this. Just go here and again, let's go for another shape, star tool. Click there and I'm just going to fill it with red. And exactly the same as before, I can just go here, select the pen tool and click here and click here. So it creates a line across there and click there. Oops. Press escape so you don't continue it. You could, of course, create all kinds of zigzag designs, curved designs, much, much more. Click there and click there. So you cut through that star. Say you want red in one part, in one quadrant, blue in another. All you need to do, move tool, select those. And with that, just drag over that. So all selected, press R again. Again, this is in the vector studio. You can move it, of course, into pixel if you want. Then with that selected, just go to the colors, click here and click this one, maybe an orange, and maybe go for green, click there and go down here for blue or something like that, click there. And then you've got a multicolored star super quick. And the thing is, this is using the insertion mode and plus. So add on top, etc. all those settings. And with that, you could of course also use bitmap fill. Just use bitmaps instead. Maybe click on each of them, different images in all of those. And again, click here on the star, and you can see all that's happened is made up of these different shapes inside the actual star design there, which you can still, of course, go up here, got the star here. You can modify it. Now let's just change it, and you can see the result of it. You can tweak the inner radius like that. And you can change the outer circle and create a whole red. But you'll notice what happens. You get these additional parts, which is not ideal. But unfortunately, it's best to create the star design in the way you want, right at the start, and then do the various vector flood fill tools for that.
So you've got lots and lots of stars. I'm just going to quickly go down here and create some stars and randomly add stars. Lots of stars on top of each other. Let's just quickly add some there and another one there and another one there. And let's just create a few more there. And you could of course have circles, etc. Loads of other designs. Exactly the same as before. All you need to do is go over here to move tool, make sure they're all selected. When all selected, then just go here. Let's go down again to the vector flood field tool or press R if you can't remember finding where it is. There it is, vector flood field tool. With that selected, you can hover over here and I'm just going to create color of maybe orange. Maybe go for a there, there, and maybe there, and so on. You can build up complex stuff. As soon as you do that, you've got insert mode. You can see it's made up of the polygons there. And you can manipulate them still. These are still vector designs, which you can change, tweak. But also you can hover over here. I'm just going to set the color to, say, there. And you can just drag over maybe a whole range of them like that. Maybe select green there. You might want to fill some. And you can see as you do it, a whole variety of different designs can be very rapidly created. And once you've done that, again, you could use all kinds of layer effects, effects on those individual parts as well. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.